All right. This is my 39th time trying this. I am going to tell you my story of how I went from being an orphan to passing away myself. Story time. I have tried to do this today 39 times. Not playing, not over exaggerating. I just hate the way I look. I've tried vlogging with the camera in my hand. It's too close to my face, you see my scars. I've had better lighting. You still see my scars. So just bear with me. I know the lighting sucks. I know the audio sucks. Um, but this is my story of how I went from being an orphan at 14, I found my mother deceased at 14, to me being in a horrific accident on life support in a coma for two months in the hospital for 86 days. I don't know how bad the wind is on that camera. It's a little windy right here, but the camera's inside the shop, so hopefully no wind's affecting it. But this is my story of how I went from being an orphan at 14, finding my mother deceased on April Fool's Day out of all days. I, uh, I was uh, 14 years old. I uh, actually had a nightmare that night. I crawled into bed with my mom, I don't know, probably 11 o'clock at night. And I woke up the next morning, she was blue, stuff coming out of her mouth. I tried to give her CPR. I called 911. I, I thought everything was gonna be all right. My mom actually had seizures before. She had a few, like one or two, just random. So I just figured it was something like that again. But little did I know, once you're blue, it's pretty much done. Um, calling people on April Fool's, telling them that your mom passed away is pretty rough. They tend to not believe you. But yeah, after that, I uh, no one really wanted me. No one could handle me. I went to live with my mom's best friend. And I was just a, a pain in the butt, honestly. I was just mean. I would like go around and cut all like the cables to everything, like the TV, the power cable, all the computer. I'd go and cut all the cables. The uh, cable, cable coming into the house. I, I would cut everything. I'd just do anything to make her life horrible. I was just mean. I was, I was in a rough place, man. So she shipped me away to my uncle down in Florida, who only wanted me because he got money every month from Social Security for taking care of me. I didn't know about that for a long time. Yeah, he got 1300 bucks a month for taking care of me. I didn't know. I was only there maybe two months, and I ran away from there. He pretty much kicked me out. And I, I lived down in the hood, down in St. Pete, Florida, by Tropicana Field. It's a pretty bad area. Like Most cops won't even go in there, and if they do, they're pretty dirty. Um... I lived in a trap house to where the only way in was through a doggy door that was behind a thorn bush. Like they uh, covered over, boarded up all the windows and everything and then sided over them. So it looked like there was no windows, no doors on the outside of the house so it couldn't get raided real easy. So like we would know that they were trying and get out of there. And um, after that I lived with my cousin. Me and him like bought and sold cars. And he, he took care of me. And then after that, I uh, came back up to Ohio. I did what I had to do to make money still. And um, my brother-in-law gave me a job doing construction, pouring concrete, actually. I, uh, I was getting really good. I mean, it, this was forever ago. I was 18, I think, when I went on full-time. But I... Uh, I don't know. I was good. I was just finally like starting like to make good money. I was doing my own jobs, and everything was going great. I was finally up on my feet. I was looking at buying a house. I just got another truck. Everything was going good. And uh, August 18th, 2016, I was driving a dump truck down a hill, and um, a crane truck went left the center, and. Uh, pretty much passed away right then. I'm trying to stay away from the D word because YouTube don't really like it. It's in the title of my last video and uh, no one really seen it. I don't 
I don't think they recommended it to anybody. Uh, so, yeah, I was driving a, a dump truck with a trailer with a mini excavator on the back down a hill. And a guy went left the center, hit me head on. Uh, his crane on the top of his truck, like his boom, came through the windshield, ripped off this side of my face. I got a huge scar right here, peeled it all the way back to like my ear. Busted my temporal artery. I was just spraying out blood. My steering wheel on my dump truck uh, cut me in half. I got, I got a binder and everything on the hook pulled me together. Because um, I'm missing ab muscles. Uh, cut me in half. And then I guess, I'm just going on police reports. I don't remember anything. I guess I kicked the door open on the dump truck to get out. But to get out, to like step down, you know how you like would step on like the fuel tank, like the diesel fuel tank usually is the step to get into those bigger dump trucks. That wasn't there anymore, or it was like busted open or something. But I slid, I stepped and I slid down, and part of the truck cut me, cut all the way through me, cut my liver in half. Because I, I, I missed a half my liver from it. And I fell over and went into my uh, fuel tank. And I went septic. I was had more diesel in me than blood, I guess, at that time. I took 148 pints of blood, too, by the way, of blood transfusions. Because once they put me on a stretcher, my collarbone, my ribs all, like, were broke. Every single rib was broke, like, coming out my back, and just everything was bad. And um, they, like, you know, ratcheted me down on the stretcher and pushed my collarbone down through my uh, clavicle artery. So I was bleeding a lot. They didn't know that at first. So they were just pumping blood in me. You know, they were, they had like two blood machines that like pushed the bags of blood into me. And they also had two nurses just stand there squeezing blood bags. Like I said, it was like 148 pints of blood I took. There's only like 10 pints of blood in your body, I think. Maybe 12. So that's a lot of blood. Um, I passed away on it a few times, like twice for sure, 100% and was revived. I flatlined a couple more times, I think three or four times. I was in a coma on life support for two months. Didn't know I was gonna wake up. Um, then I woke up and they told me what happened and I had a stroke. And, and I think I had a stroke because I was nervous. I remember asking numerous times, did I hurt somebody? Because I, I was, I've always was scared of that truck, like if a, someone pulled out in front of you, like especially with a trailer, that truck would boot a Prius, you know, a hundred yards. So like I was super scared that like I like killed a mother with her kids, you know, because if I hit that truck, if that truck hit like a small car with kids and stuff in it, they would they'd be gone. They'd just go, that that, it'd just go like a soccer ball, just. Kick a soccer ball, that's what that would be like. So I think that's why I stroked out. And then when I came back, you know, they didn't think I was gonna walk. I had no feeling in my legs. I started moving my toes, so they started therapy. It took a long time, but I started walking. I had to learn how to talk again, because I had to trach in, you know, on life support. I had to learn how to like talk and everything again, just grab stuff. I couldn't pick up a glass of water. I couldn't pick up anything. I had to learn how to use everything again. And um, once, you know, I was in there for 86 days. And then once I got out, I was at home, but I still couldn't get out of bed for about a good year. Like my girlfriend would have to help me get up out of bed every day. And it was just a big to do to go anywhere. You know, like, it would have to be planned out, like, weeks in advance. We'd have to be like, all right, well, we got to make sure you take this medicine and go to sleep at this time to get up and make sure you get all your medicine in and make sure you don't eat this the night before so you don't have to go to the bathroom 18 times because of the medicine I was on. It was rough. I'm doing better now. I'm not all the way there. I still, like, have a huge hernia and, like, I don't have any muscles right here. It's just skin and bones. Like, I have bandages on. Like, I got a binder because I'm help holds me together because I don't have ab muscles. And, um, yeah, that's my story. So, a lot of you have asked for a shorter version. My other one's like 40 minutes long. No one wants to watch that, I guess. And, um, 
I don't know. I think I used the D word too many times and YouTube just didn't recommend it. Because no one's really seen it. But that's my story. And now I got almost my dream garage. I got the FD. <clears throat> I got the FD. I got the R8. Got the Dirty Max. That's the S14 up there. It's in pretty rough shape though. I got the CLS 63 AMG. That thing is quick. And then this is probably my favorite car. This is the car that I wanted ever since I was a kid. Uh, 3000 GT VR4. And it's completely getting all redone. You can go back if you want and check out some of my videos. Everything under the car right now is new. Everything. Every piece of suspension. Every subframe. Every bushing. Every nut. Every bolt under the car is new. Now I'm working on, you know, cooling right now. I, I just did that stuff. But, and then I'm going to have the engine completely rebuilt. And I'm going to have this thing perfect. But that's my story. I just wanted to share it with you guys. How I went from being an orphan to passing away in a car accident to having my dream garage. By the way, I just want to give a huge shout out to some of the YouTubers that helped me pass the time. Why I was in the hospital and stuck in bed for over a year. The Strad Man, he was really big. Uh, Daily Driven Exotics was really big too. Um, Street Speed 717, Tommy, Donut Operator, Leon Lush became a really big one. Vehicle versions. Man, I almost forgot iDubs. Sorry. Don't forget about iDubs. PewDiePie from time to time. Um, definitely VinWiki. I don't really remember when they started. I think it's been... I don't know. I've been definitely watching him for a long time. You guys don't even know how much that helps me pass the time when you're just sitting around depressed, have nothing to do. You guys, you guys really help me out. Seriously. So, if I've mentioned anybody and you don't know them, make sure you go check them out for me. Just do it for me. Just go to their channel, hit the subscribe button. Anybody that helped me pass the time, you guys don't even know how much I appreciate that. So, I know I'm missing some of you. I'm sorry. I'll put everyone's link down in the descriptions. Dude, I got something completely exciting that might be happening. I can't really make any promises, but here's a big, big, big hit for those of you that have been here for a while. This may be getting traded in. This may be going away. So, if this is going away, you can just imagine what's coming. See you guys in the next video. Hit subscribe if you want to. I don't think I've ever asked you guys to do that. See ya.